Greetings, Couch Potatoes. Welcome back to Let's Play Eco HD. All right, hopefully you guys are hearing this. I've actually had some problems lately with my PS3 overheating, but I think I fixed it. So if you're hearing this commentary, yay! If you're not, fuck me. All right, guys, we've worked really hard to get to this point. What do you say we get the hell out of this castle? I believe she said just a little further right there. Alright, the doors are open, the bridge is extended. Let's get the hell out of here. Pretty important to note those uh, barricades at the end. Whoa, Yorda, come on. What's wrong? That must have taken a lot out of you. But come on, freedom is here. We can't stop for anything. G God damn it, Yorda. I'm not sure you understand how this works. You put one foot in front of the other one, and then you just keep doing that until you're away from- Okay. Alright, she's hurting. Let's take it slow. Nice and slow. Everything's fine. Okay, whoop. <laughs> as long as we go at a nice, leisurely gait, she can stay afloat. Oh no! Oh, she's hurting. She's in bad shape. Gosh, we're being separated. No! Yorda, I'll never leave you! <gasps> Sally! No! Let me go. I gotta go save Sally. Oh, that can't be good. Son of a bitch. She said, thank you. Thank you for being somebody who gave a damn. Oh my god, I'm alive. I'm really not sure how this happened. Let's see if we can look. Yeah, that's, uh, that is not a survivable fall right there, especially on a hard surface like this little cage thing. <laughs> hey, maybe it was magic. Who am I to say? So they've got these little spiked covering things telling you that you cannot climb up these. The only way to get out of here is to jump from cage to cage. 
And this is another one of those deals where I think that the game gives you a little bit of leeway. <laughs> I don't think you could really make these jumps, like, just, you know, normally. If you're just jumping from one point to another on, like, a regular level. But for these, they, uh, they give you a little bit of extra oomph. And if you get confused about where to go, the camera does kind of direct you. When you get near to the next one, it'll just be like, yeah, yeah, confirmed. You should jump over here. And... Made it. Well, not much to do, guys, except try to fight our way back up and get back to Yorda, because we're not getting out of here without her, I'll tell you that much. Not through the front, anyway. But man, we're so far away now. Pretty sure the only way forward is up here. It's interesting to note, if you look over here, there's another cage over here that you didn't actually interact with. And I'm not sure why they put that there. I mean, maybe they just thought it looked more realistic to have, like, a, a you know, another, like, set of cages there. Like, a number of cages that you don't need to interact with. But, like, that's the kind of thing that, that kind of stuff just doesn't end up there by accident. And I have to wonder if there was, like, supposed to be another puzzle involved with that. That before they ended development, they just kind of said, eh... We don't really feel like putting that puzzle in there, or we don't have time, or it's not good enough. But then the cage stayed there. I don't know. It's just speculation. Alright, we can see our objective all the way up there. So, this part here is... kind of a tricky platforming sequence. Not super duper tricky, but it has a couple jumps... that can be... Very difficult. We throw the switch there, that drops the line over there. I'm not sure what the logic is for that. <laughs> like, if you're gonna have a line over there that you need to drop, I mean, I assume it would be, like, for moving cargo and whatnot. But if you're gonna do that, wouldn't you put the switch next to the line? Like, maybe there's some kind of engineering process for why you wouldn't do that. I don't know. But I'm not gonna make the same mistake I made in the castle and pull this backwards so I fall off of it. The consequences aren't nearly as severe, because there's a ladder right there you can climb back up. <laughs> but it would still be annoying. And it's kind of interesting how you can actually drop in the water here and move the block while you're in the water. I don't remember too many games doing this before this game. Block pushing used to be the kind of thing that was, like, really, really annoying in video games, because you could only do it one way, and it was real finicky. You couldn't, like, push. You always had to pull. And sometimes they actually design puzzles around that. But, yeah, block pushing has come a long way in video games. <laughs> Alright, so now that gate's open. And I know it's been a while since we saw the beginning of this game, but if you remember, you may notice that this is the gate that we passed through on our way here. So we've been here before. But obviously we're coming in on our terms now. And that may give you a hint about what's to come, too. I'm not going to spoil anything, because I wouldn't do that to you, but... It's a pretty cool way to tie it together. This jump here can be a little tricky because of the camera perspective. I think this will probably work right here. Put the box there, jump, got it. Frame rate's taking a little hit. I think that's just Eco slowing down because he's so tired. <laughs> Having to climb all these chains, push all these blocks. Think about everything he's done since the start of this game. I mean, this kid, he must be sore. I don't know. He's probably in a lot better shape than I am. I guess this was back in the day when people actually worked for a living. Instead of just sitting in front of computers all day. <laughs> Alright, so that activated that over there, and we can safely just jump down into the water from up here. That's not hyper-realistic either. I mean, I guess that height's probably no problem. There is a certain point I've heard where, like, I guess, like, once you reach, like, terminal velocity, jumping into water is pretty much the same as jumping and landing on concrete. <laughs> I'm not sure what distance would require that, though. So now we're going to get into some trickier stuff. We're going to ride this up here. And shimmy all the way over to this side. 
this type of thing I've always pondered. I don't know why they include this this type of design on some of these shimmying sections where you drop down. I mean, it's obviously designed so that you can't go back the way you just came from. But I don't know why, because if you really wanted to, you could just jump down and climb back over there. I mean, you have no reason to do that. But I don't know why it's like they would include it in the first place. This part sucks, because I hate keeping my balance, but I made it just fine, so yay for that. A lot of these sections in this part are just like, you screw up one jump and you have to redo most of this. Which isn't the worst fate in the world, but it's also kind of annoying. <laughs> Here we go! Alright. I love that perspective right there. So you can see there's areas to walk on down there, but there's not really anything to do down there. I don't even know if you can make that jump over there anyway, but you definitely want to be up on these chains. And these jumps are pretty easy, just make sure you have enough momentum to get over there. Take it nice and slow. Hastiness is the enemy of efficiency. Or something like that. I'm pretty sure, like, uh, Sun Tzu said that in The Art of War. I just completely made that up, but it sounds like something he would say, right? Alright. We are close to the top. We are cruising here. This part, there's actually kind of a safety net here, so if you end up screwing up this jump, or any of these jumps here, you just end up on this little platform down there, and there's a ladder you can climb back up right there. I may end up having to use that here. Because this jump here always messes me up. It looks so simple, but it's actually... Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm an idiot, but it, I, I find this to be a really hard jump. Just to land on that thing correctly and then run over while it's spinning like that. I'm, I'm gonna mess this up. Here we go. Okay, alright. Oh, Oh, that went better than ever. Wow, I can't believe that. I consider that thing like the final boss of this area. <laughs> and it usually takes me like three tries to get it right. You guys are infusing me with power, and I appreciate it. And here we have another section where you're just kind of like, where the hell am I <laughs> at this point? Like, I have no idea where I am. I did not mean to do that. Dude, why? Oh my god, he's like magnetized to the edge. Alright. Stay close to the cliff wall. Follow the path. Probably a smart thing to do regardless. I know I would definitely be doing that if I was doing this in real life. I would be hugging that freaking wall. Well, there's definitely no safety net here. This ain't the circus. You fall, you die. Carefully drop. Keep shimmying. Shimmying. That's a weird word to say. Alright, this jump can be a little treacherous because it's a very small area to land on. Wah! Nice. Didn't even need to land on it. Just grab the edge in the air. And then on these pipes, it kind of looks like you wouldn't be able to walk in the center of them, but you can. It's totally safe. It's, it's actually the smart way to do it, because it's the center. <laughs> so we'll just keep running along here. I love the rain effect in this part of the game. It really strikes the mood of like, wow, everything's kind of fucked. I'm separated from Yorda. I lost Sally. Almost no hope of getting out of here. But we have to keep trying. And you can tell that this stuff has been down here for quite a long time. Look at the rust on these pipes. This stuff is old. Alright, so our goal here is to safely get to the bottom. There's a couple of really tricky jumps here, so wish me luck, guys. 
start by swinging to the center here. There we go. There's also a couple false paths, if I remember correctly, so bear with me. It might take me a moment to get the correct orientation. I think this is a dead end to the right. Yes. I mean, really, there's kind of only one path you can follow, but sometimes there's just, like, dead ends and things like that. Jump over there. And we can't continue that way. So we're going to pop up here. And then we can pull this chain back. And this is one of the most bullshit jumps in the game right here. I've never figured out a good way to do this. So, like, when you first jump towards this thing, you're going to miss and you're going to, like, bounce off it. And you usually grab it, like, right at the bottom as you're falling to your inevitable doom. But it doesn't always work because it's real janky, so... <laughs> here goes nothing. Oh, thank God. Thank God he grabbed it. Whew! Now, at this point, you might be tempted to uh, swing over and try and grab one of those edges there in the middle. But you actually want to come over here onto the outer edge. And we could climb down this ladder here, but that's actually a dead end. So we're going to save time and just go this way instead. I think this is the correct way over here. They put these little obstructions in the path just to mess with you. <laughs> One jump. Two jump. And here is the ladder we wanted. And here again... So there's two different ways you can do this. You, you can drop down to that little tiny ledge right there and then jump over. It's pretty tricky. Uh, I don't like that method. I like to stand right here on the ladder and then backwards jump, and you also risk missing that way. Either way, it's tricky, but this is my preferred method here. Back jump, grab it, climb up. Ooh, okay. We made it. That all went swimmingly. I'm very happy. But now the problem is... We've got these statues here, and we have no Yorda to help us. What the hell are we going to do? Oh, we have no choice but to go this way. Exploring around here a little bit, you can find another boat. I don't believe this is a boat we came in because it's a completely different area. But it's interesting to note that there may be another way out of here. We'll have to keep that in mind. And if you remember, the guys that brought us in here through that gate I mentioned previously had a really awesome sword on them that they could use to open the doors. What might we have up here? What is this glowing object? Yeah, baby! Alright. Well, Sally, I miss you, but I've got a newer, better girlfriend now. I call her Bertha. She is a magical sword that can not only kill enemies with stunning efficiency, but she can also open doors for me, just like those guys could in the beginning. I don't know why they would leave such an amazing sword just kind of unprotected right there on that altar, but so much the better for me, right? So technically, this means we don't even really need Yorda anymore. But no, banish the thought. We're not leaving here without her, goddammit. I couldn't help but notice there was a little glow in that symbol when the little part rotated around right there. I wonder if that means that this wouldn't have worked if we didn't have the sword. There's really no way to know because you couldn't get in here anyway, but I like to think that. 